Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there, in the view of us, I'm going to be looking at a poll I put out on No Man's Sky. And when you think the next update may drop, along with the sort of size that you feel that it might be. So let's jump on over to that poll and let's take a look, see, shall we, people? Okay, chums, so we're over on the old Tinterwebs. Now, this is the actual poll that I put out there. Prediction for No Man's Sky's update and content. Release date after either the Ice Statues, end of... Twen well, the Statues end, 22nd to 23rd of May, or after the Decals end, mid-June. So there's four Ice Statues at the moment. We're now we're on Tier 4, and we're almost halfway through the final tier. So I think that's going to end around the 22nd, 23rd of this week coming in May. And then it moves on to three decals that are due to you know, go through the Quicksilver cycle, which could take to the mid-June sort of period. Now, we have had updates in June previous years, but we haven't really had an update of any sort of ought in May ever. So I don't think we're going to get an update in May, even though we've only really had one expedition this year. If we do get an update in May, around the 23rd, 20th, 24th or whatever of May, I think it could just be an expedition with maybe a few extra Quicksilver items thrown in. But anyway, moving on, because this is what I put in. Content as a, as a high possibility. So this is going by what I've seen in game already. It's like the Wonders catalogue at the moment shows 78 Wonders. But there's not 78 Wonders that we can actually uncover. There's something more around about the 40 mark. So it feels that that needs to be heavily weighed in upon and have more content put in there, more wonders for us to discover. So I honestly think that's got a high possibility. Something that we saw in one expedition, I think it was Polestar, was the addition of a Singularity Drive for freighters, which when it's spun up, it lets you jump through a randomised black hole from your freighter bridge, which is pretty darn freaking epic and awesome. Very Event Horizon-esque. Inside of normal saves, you go speak to your freighter commander. The option there is there for the Singularity Drive, but it states that it's not installed. So we'll probably get the Singularity Drive for our freighters is where I'm going with this. Now, in the latest update, the Omega update and Orbital update, we've got delivered in factions for the three main fractions, you know, Mercenaries and Explorers Guild and Merchants Guild. But they're all aligned to the three different races, the Gek, the Viking and the Korvax. I'm wondering whether we might get given factions for the Outlaws and also the Autophages. Now, the actual factions for the Outlaws, we know that there's the Voice of Freedom and we'll probably be able to pick up some sort of factions inside of the actual Outlaw stations. I am wondering whether we'll be able to customise our solar ships inside of Outlaw stations rather than normal stations as well. But then I was thinking autophages, where would you pick up factional ratings for the autophage? Well, what about Man Spider up inside of the Nexus, up by Tepus, that new robot that we've built, the autophage droid with the four legs that I call Man Spider? That would be a decent place to turn in your faction rewards there. So that's something that I think could be on the cards as a high possibility. Fourth, solar ship and a shuttle customization. Inside of the last trailer that we had for Orbital, it did show shuttles inside of the appearance modifier for, you know, doing whatever you're doing for your actual ships and creating a new ship. So I think shuttles are probably on the cards. The solar ship, I think they might do a slight tweak to the outlaw stations and add an outfitter there so you can actually tweak your solar ships inside of outlaw systems. And a new expedition. The reason I think that's got a high probability is they like to do expeditions seasonally. So we had the last expedition back in January, which would be for the winter type period. We're now in spring. Spring ends towards the end of June. So it's got to be on the cards in June if they are to put out a seasonal expedition. So I honestly think an expedition along with a little bit of content could be on the cards for this update. I am still thinking that we're going to get small updates all year alongside Expeditions, apart from in August, September time when we get delivered a larger update than normal. I think it's going to be Gibbs sized, would be my guess. I'm hoping I'm right on that because Sean of the Murrays at the Game Awards said that this year would be a big one. 
Now, big update years are usually in unison with the Gib emoji and a Gib sized update, like the size of Next or Origins or Beyond. That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm not setting my sights too high if there is a natural update in June. Content that I marked as being mid to low possibility is ship racing initiators. Now I mentioned ship racing because when you look at the bite beat, it's got like a little sort of like a decal on it of a little geck with headphones on. If you look at your nutrient processor, it's got a little geck with a chef hat on. So these are to do with functions. Functions that have been brought into No Man's Sky have got these strange little decals. If you look at the Starborn Runner, there is a decal of a Gek with a racing helmet on and a checkered flag behind them. I think ship racing could be on the cards. I think it's got a mid to low possibility of appearing inside of June. If not in June, then perhaps in the summer update that I mentioned, the Gib sort of sized update. Cross save and bases. So I'm wondering whether we're going to be able to see our bases across save. So say if I've built a base in one of my saves that's in normal mode, and then I start a brand new save, say in survival mode, I can go and visit that base that's in the previous mode that I built otherwise. This didn't used to be a thing. But me, Cynical and Ricey have been doing a collaboration called Light No Sky, where we try to play light, uh, No Man's Sky like it's Light No Fire. And the base that I built in this brand new fresh save, I went there in my legacy save and I can see the base. I can see it. That's never happened before. Now, they haven't officially put this into any of their patch notes or anything like that. Maybe it's some server squiffiness. Maybe it's just a random thing that happened, but it happened. And I'm wondering whether that's going to make, be made canon at some point and put into the patch notes as an actual thing. Could be why we're seeing a bit of server squiff and have been for some time. I don't know. End of the four part ARG is number three. So I think well, we had Echoes, the Singularity, and there was one other that actually made up this four part arc of what we've seen so far when it comes to the autophages, the Void Mother, and all of that sort of arc that's coming into fruition. So I'm waiting for part four. I mean, Orbital could have been it, but Hello Games didn't make that obvious in the patch notes or in Sean Murray's tweet. So I honestly think part four is still on its way. And I think we're going to get something delivered in around the Void Mother that actually puts her as actualization into the verse, or maybe brings with it perhaps number five that's on this list, which we'll get to in a moment. Number four, living ship modules and customization. So the living ship right now has an organ chamber, not a technology area. Now, you can't get things like missiles for your living ship. You can't get the positron injector or the silotron or any other weapons for your living ship. The only weapons it has is the equivalent of photon cannons and the uh, phase beams. That's pretty much all it has. It's very underpowered when it comes to weaponry. And I'm wondering whether we're going to be given a way to actually get new organs for our living ships that brings in some sort of alien weaponry, like, I don't know, homing boogers that stick on the shields and the hulls of your, sh of your opponents and slowly digest them. Or maybe a giant fart cloud that comes out the back of your living ship to cloud your opponent and give you time to get away. Maybe Maybe it disables their engines or something. So maybe they might put in modules like that. I hope they do, because that sounds pretty gnarly and fun. But I'm wondering whether they might put a way to get into the void, considering that living ships come from void eggs, which we can only assume come from the void. Going into the void to get more organs for your living ships would make sense. But not only that, raiding the void or the realm of glass for items or echoes to bring back the perhaps that autophage man spider inside the Nexus might be something that they bring into iteration as end game content for all of those that have S-classed everything as a little bit of extra things for us to do. I think all of that, to me, makes the most reasonable, tangible sense. I would say this is logical guesswork with a sprinkle of sprinkle, a split sprinkle of speculation. I mean, I do like my speculation. I have tried to reel it in a little bit ever since the announcement of Light No Fire, and we've seen Light No Fire and how ambitious that is. 
Considering the team has been split and is going two ways and they're working between project and project, I've reeled in my expectations based on that and tried to keep my speculation more in line with what I'm seeing inside of the lore, seeing inside of subtle hints with inside of game and also the tweets that we see from the Murray. And I feel that all of this is kind of in the remit of possibility. So I put, kind of think all of the above has the chance to appear, going by logic, lore and hints and a sprinkle of speculation, which I just said. If we don't see this happen in the next update, I think at the very least there will be an expedition and additions to the Quicksilver store. Then come August, a bigger update than normal, gib-sized, that contains the majority of this stuff or stuff along these lines. Because these are the things that I've come to in my own head that I feel are possible. But there's loads of other things that could be possible. It's like when we picked up our live-in frigate for the first time, we had three options to choose from. Do you want resource-veined idiom mountains? Which sounds lovely, maybe a whole new way to gather resources from planets. A more believable way than just having patches and deposits everywhere. Or would you like megafauna was one of the options. Oh heck yes I would like megafauna. Heck yes I would, ever since I saw that rhino smashing down trees. Or those majestic diplos that took our minds away to the clouds. I would like to see megafauna on par with those megafauna. Or even be able to be able to take on the giant worms that we've got in game right now for trinkets and rewards. And there was one third option on there, mega cities. Well, what if they did implement the cities of the three main races, the Gek, the Korvax, and the Viking, their homeworlds, their mass massive cities? I mean, we know that the Korvax sadly lost their home planet, and is now, well, it was Korvax Prime, it's now known as Void Prime. But who's to say they won't add back in Void Prime with some sort of Korvax structure on there, and maybe an Echo structure, a sort of planet that hovers across the void? That could be quite epic if they did something like that, but who's, who knows? You know, I think that's quite a decent sort of mini survey that they did in-game on the players, and we haven't seen any of that come to fruition as yet. Okay, so anyway, I put out a poll. What do you think? Think Expedition and Quicksilver items only in the next update. 39% of people hit that up. That's a lot of the audience, considering I've had 300 odd votes on this. That is a massive swathe of people that are going with Expedition Quicksilver items only. Your most likely list rings true to me. Only 3% have hit that up, which is a small, teeny, tiny fraction of people. It's like 1% or something mental when you look at the amount of voters. So, no, that's probably not going to be on the cards, Caption. Hope we get some of each of the list, not set in expectations, 12%. Well, that's a little bit more like it. I'm kind of inclined to add those together to make a 15%. It's still, does, it's still bottom of the list. It's still bottom of the list. Sean said big. Let's dream big. All of it. All of it and perhaps even more. 22% of people have hit up there, which is nearly the second highest inside of this poll. The last one is more of a cop-out thing. Just want to see the poll results. Happy for anything or nothing. 23% of people hit that one up. I think at this point people have come to the realisation that No Man's Sky has, has probably got as good as it can be. You may have noticed that the, my ask that I've been asking for since the dawn of time for additional variety in super biomes and the super formula has completely disappeared off the radar now. I think if they were going to deliver that they would have delivered it time ago. I mean the patent for the super formula expired in like three years ago. We haven't seen the Super Formula come back into existence. I think because Hello Games made the conscious decision to move away from the Super Formula to fix biomes after they knew that they couldn't use the Super Formula. And I think that's guided them in the way that the game has evolved to the point that they can't de-evolve it back. So I'm hoping to see some of the Super Formula lifted and shifted to their new project, Like No Fire. I can only but hope and keep my fingers crossed that one day we will see what Hello Games' engine is fully capable of when it comes to procedural generation. And I'm so gutted that it didn't actually come into fruition into No Man's Sky. Because seeing some of the early screenshots of some of the worlds and terrains that the actual Super Formula manages to create were freaking mind-blowing. But anyways, moving on to the actual comments people inside of the verse. So here we are, let's scroll on down and let's see what you guys had to say. 
So Fitzgerald Michael says, I would enjoy super juicy updates. The hype train rolls on. Heck yeah. Seth's gaming and stuff. Just an idea for an update. Let us rotate base parts. They don't let us do right now like floor panels so we can build fun stuff without a wire glitch. And of course, give us this option to delete a base from the teleporter menu, just in case we can't access the base computer. Also show us how many base parts we are using and show us how many base parts we have remaining. Seth, they are all very decent suggestions. I would love to see a guest book at a base computer as well. So rather than people littering the place with comms balls, they can just leave a nice message to the builder inside of the base computer. I'd also like the ability to favorite our bases inside of base computers. Then when you put down another base computer, it says, would you like to reconstruct one of your favorite bases as an option? And you can make a duplicate of it on another planet. It's like I love making R2-D2s. Yeah, one of my favourite bases. And I build them from scratch every bloody time. The, the, the ability to have a blueprint system or a favourite system wouldn't go amiss. It really wouldn't. Okay, go on. Lost Guardian says, I want the ability to fly our freighters around. I've had a few people say that. Yeah, Jake Armstrong says, me too. But with how freighters are, it would take a lot of work, so I'm not sure. Yeah, the problem with that is if you've got a giant freaking base on the back of the dang thing, and of course Hello Games has to track point to point where all those things are in location. And to do that in real time would be difficult. The only way that I could imagine that they do, they do, they can do it is as soon as you choose to pilot the freighter, it despawns your base in the background, and as you fly your freighter around, when you come to a stop again and you go to walk towards your base, it re-renders it back in. That's the only way I can imagine that happening. I can't see why they couldn't make it happen. It might take a little bit of tomfoolery, but um, they could make it happen. Ishmael Kipling. I am hoping we get a diversified terrain and planet life on all planets similar to Light No Fire. I think I just touched on that with what I was saying with the super formula, but yes, there is something in the pit of my stomach that I wish and I hope and I dream that a lot more variety could be achieved from inside of No Man's Sky because the comments that I see of people saying that you know once you've seen every single biome and you've played for about 40 odd hours you've seen every planet that No Man's Sky has to offer. Go! Cool. Two Squirrels! Hey Captain! You also talk about really cool stuff just so you know people is talking about the paranormal activity aliens just so you know and the community knows is pretty cool. Yeah so the Vatican and places like that have been picking up on, are aliens actually aliens? I mean, are angels actually aliens? And fallen angels, demons, are they aliens? Which is a notion that I've held in some of my old paranormal videos and books I've written. I've said the same thing. Are angels, demons and aliens all one and the same entities? Touched on that some time ago in, in my writings, in my publications. The HK-47, never thought I'd say this, but but the latter the better for me. The last thing I need during my exams is a No Man's Sky update. Well, good luck with your exams, firstly. And yeah, um, they always seem to drop updates at the wrong time for a lot of people. A lot of people are on holiday or a lot of people are out doing something. But, you know, it is what it is. JC the Saviour. I'm thinking one more small mid-update and then the big and drops in September. Exactly my sentiment. That's exactly what I was saying at the start of this video. Me and you, same page, mate. Race Nomo. If something new comes up, I'm screwed. Playing Division 2, global event. Haven't touched No Man's Sky. But this queakens. Okay. Well, um, I haven't played Division 2. I liked the first Division game, that was pretty good. I watched a few people jump into Division 2 and saw that it was a little bit more of a grind and the, the bad guys were more of bullet sponges. And I, it put me off, but maybe I should take a look at it. Joe! Hello there, Joe. Definitely expecting an expedition soon. And just like you said, a nice gib update this summer. Ah, oh, looks like a few people are on the same sort of path as me. I like this one, though. Gib backwards spells big. It freaking does, doesn't it? I've never noticed that before. Ah, lovely jubbly. Coolio. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, 
are there any news that an, act, an actual update is actually coming? Blah, 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 blah. And my reply to him, only that the Quicksilver items are getting low. Just this ice statue and then three more decals left. And that is usually a good indication of when an update is going to drop. Massive great big thank you to everybody who took part in the poll over on my community tab. And thank you for all the comments left upon it. It has given some a pretty decent discussion, I believe, for this video. And I hope you're kind of on the same page as everybody else there. That perhaps a update in May through June will be an expedition plus of maybe a couple of quality life improvements. A small bit of content, perhaps if we're lucky, but maybe just Quicksilver items added to the store. Expedition, Quicksilver items to the store, little bit of content if we're lucky. That's where I'm setting my expectations, so I'm not actually let down in any way, shape or form. However, I did have my two lists of things that I think are likely and least likely to hit the actual content stack with inside of the next update. And if it doesn't happen in this update, I kind of feel through logic, reason and deduction that some of those things might come to fruition this year. Even if it doesn't happen this year, perhaps next. So I do understand that Hello Games has dual projects at the moment, the splitting of teams. I'm not going to be setting my expectations as high as I used to, but that does not mean that I'm not excited for what Hello Games are bringing into fruition. Quite the quantity, actually. I mean, because of Light No Fire, I am hoping for more Light No Fire news this year. I'm hoping that we get to see something at the Game Awards of this year from Hello of the Games. And perhaps they might even mention No Man's Sky why they're there. But I'm hoping that this year, for Light No Fire, that we at least learn what platforms it's coming to. What the release bundles will be. What do you get for pre-ordering? I'm very excited for Light No Fire. I'm excited for No Man's Sky. I'm excited for Hello Games. I do have some concerns when it comes to Light No Fire. I'll be doing a video very soon on my concerns for Light No Fire from our little community project that myself, Ricey, and Professor Cynical have done called Light No Sky. If you haven't seen that playlist, please do. I'll put a link over there. Go watch it because we try to play Light... We try to play No Man's Sky like it's Light No Fire. And there's things that gets me super excited, things that have got me super concerned. I'll be doing a roundup video after this draws to a conclusion, a little mini experiment that is, on my thoughts and feelings. So stay tuned for that, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've hit that notification bell, and please share my videos out with other people in those respective communities like No Fire, No Man's Sky. Till next time, goodbye goodbye, and goodbye again. was one of my first backers ever a fellow creator for no man's sky you just vanished one day no more content on your channel all your socials just suddenly stop but your super membership never dropped are you still there there are you all right i hope you return one day, I hope that you might. Thank you, Cue Ball Gaming. Thank you, Chum. Cue Ball Gaming, I miss you. Cue Ball Gaming, I hope you return. Thank you, Cue Ball.